Good afternoon and welcome to today's Stalls TV presentation, Knock Em Out with Knockout Designs. I'm your presenter, Josh Ellsworth from Stalls TV, and we have a very exciting class plan for you. It's about 45 minutes in total, at least that's my goal, but we have a lot of uh, samples, a lot of techniques we want to teach you on how to create the art, number one, in CAD Works Live, and a, a couple different techniques for creating this popular knockout design look uh, for cutting on your vinyl cutter or even sending in to get uh, custom transfers created. And then we also want to go through and take uh, some of those looks through to an application and give you some tips and tricks over at the heat press, as well as highlight a few heat transfer materials that you may want to incorporate into your knockout design looks. And as always, uh, we are live. There's a question box that you can type in your questions. Karen Ross is going to be helping me with today's presentation, answering those questions back via chat, or where possible, we'll stop and she'll direct them in and I'll do my best to answer them live on air. If not, you can always ask over on our Stalls TV forum. So without further ado, we're going to get started. It looks like 80 plus percent of our audience does own a vinyl cutter. And I'd like to know how many of you are using CAD Works Live. So we're going to launch a poll to find out how many of you are familiar, at least with CADWorks Live. And that will help us as we set this up and sort of walk through uh, the different uh, components of CADWorks that you uh, will use. And so a couple more seconds to finish that up. We'll go ahead and close off those results. And Karen, if you can share the results with me. 62% of the viewers have used CADWorks and 38% have not. Okay. So with that, let's switch over to the computer screen to cadworkslive.com for those of you that haven't used it to tell you a little bit about it. So CADWorks Live is a free online design tool that you can log into and create a profile. It's cadworkslive.com, CADWorks with an X. Um, you simply go there, you sign up for a free account, and then when you log in with your username and password, you have a couple design modules. Number one is when you click on design, you have the design studio. That's what we'll be using today. And then you also have the Easy Teams option, which is for player names and numbers. But today, we're going to work a whole lot with the Design Studio, so I've already launched that um, for us. Now, I've prepped some knockout designs that are already cut and weeded in order to save us time. But I want to walk you first through the step-by-step -step process uh, to creating this look. So um, there's a couple different types of knockout designs that I'm going to show you today. One is using uh, fairly simple clip art. I'll show you step-by-step -step for that. And one uh, is a technique that you can use for more complex clip art incorporating into your design. Um, so let's start off by getting some text onto the screen. Um, in CAD Works Live under the Design Studio, you just click the Add Text button, and then you can uh, type in your text. So in this case, let's do um, Love, and then you can change the font. One thing about um, getting a good look is I recommend using a very bold font because you'll see more of your clip art through the design. Um, so we're just going to pick a standard font here. Um, and and tightening, tight, tightening up your character spacing always helps. So a couple tips, pick a bold font, tighten up your character spacing a bit, and then ultimately we're going to click OK once we're happy with those results and it will drop onto the page. Now, uh, multiple lines of text always tends to work uh, better with knockout design, so you can make multiple copies of your existing text, simply layering the word several times to create a cool effect, or even changing this. So if it's um, love, and then we have the name of a school, maybe it's AGHS for Albert Gallatin High School, it'll maintain all, that font selection and that character spacing, as long as I'm editing by double-clicking on that text. And basically what I'm doing here is I'm creating vector art that's ready to cut on a vinyl cutter. Once I'm happy with the design, I'll select it all. And I'm going to go ahead and let's make this 12 inches wide. Um, that'll also allow us to see it a little better. And then what I would recommend is actually grouping uh, the text together. So I'll select both layers, uh, both objects rather, by drawing a box around them. And I'll go up to shaping and I'm going to group or condense them uh, together in CADWorks. And now it's moving as one object, it's sizable as one object, et cetera. Um, at that point, when you group them, you'll want to make sure that you've finalized your font selection. You're not going to make any more changes to character spacing because that would all be a, a manual change or a start over at that point. And if you make a mistake, you can always undo in CADWorks. So once you have your basic text that you're going to punch through or create that knockout design look through, the next step is really to bring on a piece of clip art onto the screen. So 
Uh, with knockout designs, we most commonly see uh, standard uh, silhouette uh, artwork or very basic artwork. And there's a whole library of clip art in CAD Works Live. So if I click on Add Clip Art, it will bring up a full library. You can go in the individual uh, folder systems here uh, based on if you want a mascot or whatever you might want and sort of go through that. Or you can do a search term, whether you want to search for a heart, uh, a star, whatever it might be. There's a ton of clip art already in CAD Works Live, and you can import your own vector art. So if you own a vector art package from Great Dane Graphics or wherever it may be, you can import your own clip art into CAD Works Live. So in this case, we're going to stay fairly simple on our first lesson, and I'm going to search for a heart. Um, it will take a second to render that. Actually, I need to search in the overall clip art folder, not just the mascots. So let me search again with that overall clip art folder selected. Um, find a heart that I like, open it up onto my design screen, and I usually like to colorize that in a different color um, just for visual purposes. Um, at that point, you want to size the heart uh, based on you know, how you want it to look when it punches through the design. So you want to make sure both components are to size, and once you have them to size, you don't want to make any modifications. Now, I'm going to make a, a duplicate copy of the text because it's going to be important in my next step. So basically, I'm going to edit the text and duplicate it and keep a copy over to the side that's the exact right size. Okay, so here's where the punch out or the knockout really happens. I have the heart. I have it layered over the background text exactly as I want it. Um, you know, you can always select those and use the centering tools to align it in CAD works if you want it perfectly centered in the middle. Um, that's an option. Or you can manually do it. But once you have it positioned exactly where you want, you're going to select both objects. That's your group background text as well as the heart. You're going to go up to shaping, and we're going to click on back minus front. What that's going to do is it takes this heart and it punches it directly through the background layer. So we've effectively created um, a punch out or a template that we're going to use in the very next step. So if you're following along, uh, match your clip art, match your text to size, make a duplicate copy of your text, and then complete the back minus front command to punch your clip art through your text in the location that you want. Once that is done, I'm going to colorize this just a different color, once again, just so I can see it visually. And I want to align these two pieces of text on top of each other. Because while I've created something really cool here, and I could easily make this heart you know, um, a complementing color and probably cut that and be happy with the result, the beauty of the knockout design is that the heart actually conforms to the shape of the Love AGH text in the areas that are missing. It's not a solid image that's kind of making the text a little bit uh, less legible. Um, so what I'll do is I'll select my uh, punched out text component. I'm going to hold the control key and select my other text component. And then I'm going to align those perfectly uh, centering the object. So I click on uh, center middle. And that basically aligns the two pieces together. And, and keep in mind, if I were to sort of look at this right now, I have a full background layer of black. And I have the full orange foreground layer. Um, if you want to do complete layers, you can certainly layer these. I'll show you a little bit about that on the next tutorial. But I only want to cut the clip art out of the black. So what I'll do is I'll go up to shaping. And I'm going to uh, click once again, I'm sorry, um, shaping back minus front one more time. Once those objects are perfectly centered, I click back minus front one more time. And basically, that creates my punch through. Um, so now I have a cuttable black layer, and now I have a cuttable orange layer. I'm going to cut separately and layer at the heat press. So there's one sort of invisible thing that we need to address here. When we center those objects in CAD Works Live, although it looks visually like they're perfectly centered, there are just small little hairlines that could potentially be off and be hiding somewhere here on my background layer. So I call it the cutter goggles, or it's called wireframe in CAD Works Live. We need to take a look at the actual vector art that's going to be cut. And to do that, I'm just going to click on wireframe down in the bottom right of the screen. And I can see that it's a fairly good punch through. I see a little bit extra lines here that I wouldn't want to mess with cutting and weeding. And in order to get rid of those, all I would do is select the object 
go up to shaping and I break it apart by curves. Okay, so select the object that you want to break apart, basically meaning I'm separating those little imperfections from the primary design, breaking it apart, and then I can go sort of draw boxes and hit delete on my keyboard for all these little pieces that I don't want in the design. This little hairline is attached to this piece, so that won't hurt anything um, at all in the cutting and application, but you want to delete all those sort of free-floating uh, fine details that you have, and then ultimately you want to combine this back together. So we broke it apart down to a curve level, we're going to combine it back together, and now when we go out of the wireframe view, we can reassign uh, that color uh, to get the visual ultimately to have the uh, design ready to cut, weed, and heat apply over to the garment. What kind of questions do we have coming in, Karen? We have one question. Can we use CADWorks Live and then save to our computer to cut at our own store? Okay, so good question. CADWorks Live is an online designer, so at this point to get it to the cutter, um, or to send it out to a transfer company, you'd have a couple options. Number one, I don't need this heart clip art. I would delete that off the screen. I would go to File. You can either send it to VectorCut, which is a free cut driver that comes with CADWorks. So you can send it to your vinyl cutter of choice. Um, that brace basically brings it from the web down to your local computer to send to your cutter. Or you can export the design. And so the exportable file formats, a pretty universal one is a vector EPS or a vector PDF. So you can create and then export into a file format that whatever you're doing with it in your store is going to utilize. Um, so that's just a couple ways you can use the artwork that's been created. Now, just to make sure we're all on the same page from an application standpoint before I give the next tutorial, let's take a break and come over to the heat press. So if you can switch me back here, we'll come over to our Hotronics Fusion heat press um, that we're using today. And We've already pre-cut some stuff, once again, to save some time. And the nice thing about knockout designs, we don't have any direct layering. So um, I've done that same sort of design except Love Dance, and I have a layer of hologram silver glitter flake, and then also the fluorescent blue glitter flake. But you can see how they fit perfectly in like a puzzle. And I'd like to show you uh, the application of this. So I'm going to switch to my heat press cam here. Uh, we're right overhead on the heat press. You have a real nice aerial view. We'll swing the press away. I'm going to load a laceback shirt from Sanmar. It's a tri-blend. Beauty of the Fusion heat press, of course, is I can split and thread that garment, getting rid of all this lace that's behind the shirt hanging underneath the platen, and position that on. I'm going to start with a preheat. And then I'm going to start my application. Now you can really apply these in whatever order you want. I prefer always to apply the larger design first because it's easier to register and center and make sure I have it in the proper position. I'm just going to take a peek here. Yep, you got to make sure you get all the little details weeded out. I noticed that A looked imperfect um, when I laid it out there. I was missing that cavity. Um, but we're just going to line this up onto the press. I usually like to pull the shirt, take a look to make sure everything's straight. It is a scoop neck, so my placement's a little higher on the shirt than typical. And here's the beauty of two color applications with this glitter material and a lot of the other materials I'm going to show you today. I can do what's called a two second fast tack and just hot peel the carrier away. So in multicolor applications, that makes it extremely convenient uh, for going fast. I can tack that base layer down for two seconds and then I can come back. Uh, with my foreground, uh, position it into place, and then cover and complete my full application. So I'm going to use the cover sheet since I have glitter material directly exposed to the heater now. Lay that into place and press both layers for the full 15 second application. Now these designs are what I call butt registered or they're right up against each other. So your placement is, is very critical. Um, it's really not that big of a deal, big of deal if you get a little hairline showing through of the shirt, um, but just know that uh, placement's important in the application. That two-second tack helps to prevent any shrinkage and to keep things moving fast uh, throughout the production process, giving you a very nice uh, completed design. Now I'm going to come back to my 
uh, normal cam because it looks like that's getting a little bit washed out there in the lighting and give you a better look of our completed shirt. So you have both layers of glitter. Um, you have something that has a lot of sparkle. Um, just a really uh, cool finished design with the knockout print. So that's one uh, example. Any questions coming in? I hear you typing over there, Karen. One. Um, Grace says, I have WinPC software. Can I do this on this software? Unfortunately, I am not familiar with WinPC. So I'm able to give you an accurate answer. Um, Torx Live is free, so there's really no risk in, in, in using it. Um, so you'd be able to use these tutorials um, to run CADWorks Live, and it's a web system, so it can run on Mac, PC, whatever you're using. Okay? So let's go back over to the screen and show you another tutorial. Okay, um, so remember, this is a basic clip art. We've punched it through. That's a basic knockout design. I think those, that's the fundamental way uh, to get started. If you wanted to have a little bit of garment show through, you can always um, basically inset your outside piece or do a small contour around your inside piece to put a little bit of a gap outline. That's up to you. Uh, but I'm going to show you a completely different example. And I'll open this. I've prepped some stuff in advance. And I think this one's pretty cool. Let's open that one. So this will give you a, a, an example of more detailed clip art. And you can see we've leveraged full layer on layer here while still getting the knockout effect. Basically what we've done is we've created the, the punch out out of the blue layer. And we actually created a drop shadow on the whole thing. So we're going to have a full uh, background layer as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this off to the side, and we're going to try to recreate something similar uh, to show you. And so let's start by adding um, some numbers to the background. So let's do number 22. I can select whatever font um, I want. Once again, I would select something that's uh, bold. Um, you can always move your characters uh, closer together. Um, I'm going to add the effect of the drop shadow now um, to this number. So I'm going to click on Add Effect. And there is some standard contours and drop shadows. This would work the same either way. I just thought the, the drop shadow was kind of cool. So I'd select the shadow option that I want, open it up, and then you can program the specific dimensions that you want uh, the drop shadow to be. It defaults to the negative uh, 0.12, so dropping down to the lower uh, left on this particular uh, one. Click OK. It'll drop onto my screen. At that point I can size it. So if I want these to be 8 inch high numbers, I just type in 8. Um, it'll size accordingly. And then I can bring my uh, clip art back over into the frame and start to work with it. So let me zoom on just these two pieces. And then I can start to work with it. So I got my components. Um, I'm going to do a full background with just the foreground. First thing, these are reading as one object since I created them together. So I need to select them and break them apart by colors because I only want to punch through the, um, the black layer um, in this instance. So what I'll do, um, this one's fairly simple, is that I'm going to just place this football player on top of my black layer. And let me bring it to the front. I've selected the football player. I'll bring it to the front this one out of the way, making sure not to resize anything. And then I can size this football player or my complex piece of clip art um, wherever I want um, on the design. So if I want them to show up sort of in the body here, the two a bit, um, and be there, I can select them both pieces, go to shaping, back minus front, and it looks like it completed inaccurate for me, so let me undo it. Um, I sort of got things out of order as I was moving it around, so I'm just going to select both pieces again, and I just undid, and I'll try the function one more time. There we go. Um, and it punched through, and so basically, um, it's that simple. I've created that look. So now, I have, remember this is supposed to be a drop shadow. I'll line it up over at the heat press, 
but you have this piece of the design um, where basically you have uh, the punch through or the show through of the player um, throughout the whole design, even though um, you're pulling the clip art away. So it's really cool, and that's just a, a simpler way to do it if you have complex clip art, because then I'm not weeding this in-depth football player um, as a standalone design. I'm actually weeding the face of the player, the football, the jersey, etc., from the design. And if you're not happy with the look, you can see this 28, the spacing over on the right. I like the look of that better because it was a little tighter in the spacing, and you're getting more of the player. That shows you the importance of sort of uh, making the numbers and the text um, the character spacing really tight and also selecting something really bold. Um, but just another way to do it. Um, and I have another example to that end that I want to show you. And so let me open this up. We did a, a design for uh, fire department, Connellsville Fire Department, with the same exact concept. So you can see I started with fire truck clip art that's in CAD works. I have some basic text. Uh, stands for Connellsville Volunteer Fire Department on the screen. And basically all I did is created um, an outline layer that's going to be act as my show through. Now, of course, you can do this right on the garment, and the garment can be your show through. Um, that's completely your choice. But um, in this way, by having a background layer show through, it makes it really simple because all I'm doing is punching out of the foreground layer. So it sort of reduces my steps from doing the back minus front and just getting the object. So just to show you that in motion, let me double click on the text. I'm going to add an effect of an, of an offset, which is under the contour, and do a small contour. Um, 0 0.10 is the default. I'll let me do 0.25 so you can see a little more of it. Click OK. Remember, once you create the contour of the drop shadow, you are going to select this and then break it apart by colors because I only want to punch through the foreground layer. Now I will be able to move this to the back and sort of line that fire truck clip art on top of it as I see fit, moving it around and sizing it. Once I'm happy with where it's at, I'll select both objects. Remember, I only sized the clip art. I didn't change my text because it needs to fit perfectly on the background. do it. Um, select them both and go to shaping, back minus front. It's going to create that punch through. And then I effectively have done my design where I can see the outline of that fire truck. And it's still conformed to the text. So I have those nice show through areas. So um, I'm going to step back over to the heat press. But while I'm doing that, um, I'm also open for uh, questions uh, while I'm applying this, Karen. So anything else coming in? Good. I know with, with topics like this, often it's best to sort of digest it and then uh, watch the recording and sort of step through it by yourself. So we'd encourage you to do that. The recording will be up on stallstv.com uh, uh, within the next day. It should be post tomorrow. I'm taking my 16 by 20 attachment off. And the reason why is I'm going to load my 11 by 15 because I want to press the front of a hooded sweatshirt. I just dropped that into place. Then I'm going to take my hooded sweatshirt, split it open, and thread it onto the heat press. And that helps the pocket sort of drop off. Let me bring you close up here. I'm going to start with the preheat, also adjusting my pressure for the changed platen. And then I'm going to complete my design. A lot of it is about material selection as well. And so in this case, I used fashion film uh, for a background layer. And since it's for a fire department, I'm, I'm making a bet they're going to like reflective materials. So I'm going to use 3M reflective as a foreground. Remember, I'm just tacking down the background for the two seconds. Peeling the carrier. And then I've cut out of heat transfer film. All can be cut on a vinyl cutter, 3M reflective. See how it perfectly lays in there. 
Um, I don't need a cover sheet actually because the reflective material, the carrier, is fully covering even my thin outline. So I can just heat press this all together for the recommended time, temperature, and pressure of the one that requires the highest setting out of the fashion film in the 3M reflective. Peel my carrier and you have a really uh, cool design and it looks so much cooler, but it's really simple uh, to do. So we'll keep you right here at the heat press. I want to show you a couple other, a couple other examples um, while we're at this and explain some different materials. So this one is uh, pretty cool. I'm going to load, um, this is a shirt from Boxercraft. It's just a short sleeve v-neck sort of fan jersey uh, looking shirt, a little more fashionable. Um, obviously it's a little less thick than the hoodie I just pressed, so I'm going to adjust my pressure when I preheat. And I've created a class of shirt. So class of shirts are great for knockout designs. Um, any sort of multiple line text that you can think of um, is going to be great here. And I've cut this out of a very unique material. This is called Super Tech Clear Matte. So it's actually a clear material uh, available from Stahl's CAD Cut Direct. Um, you cut it, you weed it, um, and it's ready to heat apply. This is also the same material that can be printed on a VersaCan. So this one technically applies at 280. I'm going to cheat a little bit because we're up at 320 degrees here. It takes a single step of five seconds, and then you wait till it cools down uh, to peel the carrier. So I'll just remove it from the heat press and take a question here. So go ahead. OK, we have a specific question. I have a request for a wrestling mom shirt with a wrestling mat knockout. How do I use the knockout process when making my own clip art? Okay, so a wrestling mom shirt with a wrestling, a wrestler knockout? Wrestling mat knockout. Okay, and how do I, um, so if you want to use your own clip art uh, for this process, um, what I would recommend doing is either vector art works great, so if it's already vector art, um, you can just use it. Um, I'll show you how to, how to break down vector art to just the silhouette if you want to use just this simple punch through method. But if it's complex art, I would recommend the way I just did the fire truck design and also I did the football player design. But you can bring your own clip art into CAD Works. You can import it and use the process. Um, you can probably execute this in Corel Draw or Adobe Illustrator as well, I'm sure. Um, but it would be the, using the same process, just making sure you have vector art up front. We'll try to create something sort of on the fly uh, for that sort of example. So. On this, you can see that I've already applied the clear mat material. And the beauty, beautiful thing about the clear mat is you basically get this laser etched effect on the shirt. You can see how it discolors the shirt. It feels fantastic. And it even shows a little bit of the grain of the shirt uh, through the print. You got to watch when you're moving the shirt around that you don't move it around too much because ultimately I want to inlay my other pieces here without warping the shirt because I'm going to have to register that in. So that's, I'm going to bring glitter flake and sort of the uh, graduation cap, a guy and a girl wearing those on top. Something you'll notice here is that my mylar carrier is overlaying the background layer. That has the potential to create an indent where that carrier is going to dip down into there if I apply it at the full setting. For that reason, I'm going to recommend anytime you see that, you just tack that layer for a couple seconds, okay? Get the carrier away, and then cover it and heat press for your full time, temperature, and pressure. That way you don't have it under the heat with the uh, indent happening. So I'll leave that away, and then we have a completed shirt design. So it's all about mixing and matching materials and looks. You can get some really uh, cool designs. Um, and on this one, as you can see, we just had the, the full uh, clip art through. We didn't conform it to the actual text, which is another uh, method. It re helps reduce your weeding, but you don't necessarily get the exact same look that you'd get as if the clip art conformed to the text. 
Um, I'm going to change out this platen, and while I'm doing that, I'll take another question. Any other questions, Karen? No other questions, okay. So another cool application on the press, and this is just showing you different examples of knockout designs and what you can do with it, is actually uh, changing uh, one of the new platens for 2015 that we launched sort of mid-year was the under the bill platen. And that basically allows you to load uh, cat bills, flat bill hats upside down, and we're actually printing the under bill. Consequently, you can also flip this cap inside out and print the top of the bill. So to illustrate this and how you can create a knockout look with a single color of material, we've actually taken this Zoo Crew design cut from fashion film, and you can see, um, I'll hold that a little closer to the camera, but we've basically punched out the clip art of an elephant. So it's a little bit more detailed, but it's conformed to the text using the same process. And you can just heat apply that on. So the cool thing about this attachment is you can start to press multiple hats at a time, loading them. Uh, you should dial in your pressure first before you change the attachment. I didn't, which is why I'm changing it on the fly. Lock it down. And the same concept, if you just want to tack it, you can. If you want to do it for the full application, that's up to you. Often with headwear, um, you have to apply a little more pressure in the application just because you have this ridge of the hat that sometimes the film sits down over. So you want to consider that. And um, I think this looks good as is. I'll hold that a little closer to the camera for you so you can see sort of the elephant. Um, and it's a really cool effect just to have show through of the garment. And ultimately, it means you just need one color of heat transfer film uh, rather than two. But if you did want to line up and press another color, it's very simple. Same concept. I'm just going to register it. Hats are great to register on because they don't stretch at all when you're peeling the carrier. So your registration can be real tight. And if you're playing along at home, you know that that carrier is overlapping that film. So I should tack this down just for a couple seconds so I don't get a permanent mark. Remove the carrier and then complete the full application together. And I'll have a completed hat with a really cool knockout design. Any additional questions while that's completing? Can the hat platen be used for regular build hats or just flat build hats? So the hat platen can be used for regular build hats, but just know that if that bill's curved when it's going on, that it's ultimately going to flatten in the application. You'll just have to recurve it. Also, it's going to make placement a little more difficult unless you try to flatten that bill uh, before you place your graphic. But ultimately, any piece of headwear uh, can slip into here for application. Um, you can even get to the sides of a lot of hats as well. And I'm um, looking for a shoe here. The reason I like this press is it also allows you the ability to do the sides of shoes with this platen as well uh, with heat transfer film. So sort of like the Swiss Army platen, um, two short sleeves at once uh, is even possible. But uh, a great look. And then just a tip when you're pressing the flat bill hats, make sure you don't curl them. Uh, too quick because you don't want to warp uh, the hat. But ultimately, you're getting some uh, really cool look. So I'm going to step back over to the software. If you can move back to the software for me, Kara. And we had the question about the um, Wrestling Mom shirt and design. So let me see if I can mock something up real quick, just as a concept. And we'll start with add text. Pick your font. I'm going to make a duplicate copy. Make that say mom. 
I assume this is what we're talking about for the look that we're after. More just the clip art coming in, so just some basic text of a design. Now I can choose to punch out through both of those pieces uh, to knock it out or just through the mom. Um, once again, I, I forgot to bring the text closer together, so that's going to not allow me to see whatever clip art I do select um, that well. So I'm going to go back and adjust the character spacing a bit so they're tight but not touching. That might be a little too tight. Okay, that's looking better. All right, and I think we are looking for like a wrestling mat clip art. So what I'll do, um, if you wanted to bring your own clip art in, you would just go to File, Import, and if it were vector art, um, these are the acceptable uh, uh, file types. You have a uh, vector PDF uh, that you can bring in. So if you can convert it to a PDF, you can bring it in. Ultimately, if it's uh, raster art, which means it's not cut ready, you need to do something uh, called vectorizing it. Um, so I would go to File, Import, and Vectorize, which is basically a way for me to take something like a piece of clip art that I can pull um, off of a website. Let's take, for instance, um, this. Oh, I've done that Apple before. Let me see if I can find something uh, different. How about, um, let's take this swimmer, for instance, which was just pulled off of Google Images. I can bring that image in, as long as you have rights to it, select the background. In this case, there is no background since it was a PNG file. It has a transparent background, but normally I would select the background color, click Next, and then select up the nine foreground colors, click Next. It'll do its best job of a trace for me. And basically, you can adjust this to get a better trace if you're not happy with the result in the detail. But once you're done, you click OK. It drops it onto a screen, and just as quick as that, it's vector art. So, you know, if you want to pull a wrestler off of um, a site, uh, maybe a customer already has a wrestling logo that they're interested in, you can try to vectorize it in here. But ideally, you would first offer the customer the vector clip art that's in the package. So you would just click Add Clip Art. I'm just going to type in, I think let's try wrestling, I guess. And we have some options in here already that I can select. So. Um, if I wanted to take something like this, open it up, I have a couple options. I can do, I can punch through with that. I mean, that's pretty detailed, um, as you can see. So I probably want to use the method like I did for the uh, fire truck design and also the football player design, where I create a background layer, or you can go with the silhouette. So I think we have enough time. I can show you both of those options. So. Um, basically, this clip art is reading as one piece right now. If I want to get down to where it's just a silhouette to see if it looks right, um, what I would have to do is break it apart. So let me make a copy, edit, duplicate. I'm going to go up to shaping and break it apart by curves because I'm trying to get all those little pieces deleted out of there. And so ultimately then I'll be able to just hopefully delete some of these components. Um, obviously, this clip art's a little rough because the head is sort of into the body, so it almost looks like he's a, a wrestler without the head. But you can, you know, if you have time, you can pick which pieces you want to delete uh, to still make it look good. If you just want the outline, if the outline works, that's something you can do if you wanted to keep, you know, the face in there to weed away for show through. Um, that's how you get to a basic silhouette. You break it apart and you delete all the vector components that you don't want to make it simple. Um, ultimately, at that point, you can, you know, assign a color to it and get that sort of blob image um, that goes through there. I don't think that speaks well for this design. It doesn't really look like a wrestler to me at this point. So you may want to pick another piece of clip art or, or go with the detailed method. So let me. So this may make for a better silhouette just because it's more defined and I think you can figure out it drops onto my screen here. That's a little bit easier to work with. Um, so a little bit of it's about art selection too, but once you have it, you can break it apart. Ultimately just get to the outline and, and go from there. So those are your choices. If I want to do um, the technique I was telling you earlier, um, let me uh, double click this, 
add my outline. Okay, I'm going to break it apart by colors. I just go to shaping, break apart by colors. Now I'm going to take that black layer, bring it over here, colorize it so I can see the difference. And then let's drop this wrestler in front of it. Trying to make sure I can get a lot of the image of what exactly that is. Select both layers and then complete my action. Select them both and back minus front. Now when I pull that away, I have that image, so then I'd be able to create that sort of uh, wrestling image through there, ultimately, to get the effect um, that I'm after. So that's one option of a way to do it. Ultimately, um, you know, the other option is to go with a, a little bit more basic um, silhouette type of art. Um, that's optimal and ideal, I think, for getting uh, really cool looks, but you have choices with the process. You know, it's not too late where I could still uh, grab this as long as I made a duplicate copy and ultimately punch this through um, as well or as an option. So hopefully in a roundabout way that answers the question. Is there any follow-up questions from that particular viewer? Okay, so hopefully that helps you. What other questions do we have? Can you fill in the art and make it a silhouette? So to fill in the art and make a silhouette, that would be how, how we just did. That would be actually more breaking it apart and only keeping the components that you want. Okay, so the process is you bring the clip art in, you uh, go to shaping, break it apart by curves, and then either just pull the very outside layer for the full silhouette or um, pull the outside layer with whatever components you want to keep. So perhaps I want to keep some of the definition of the legs here, but I want to get rid of some of the details. You can keep all the components that you want as part of the design, and then basically when you go to combine it back together, that's when you can really fill it back in uh, with color at that point. So that's a little bit of sort of how to break apart artwork and combine it again within CAD works. What else? So I want to uh, conclude the training because we're down to the last couple minutes on one last heat application. If we can go back over to the heat press. And to finish things off, we're going to heat apply a fan jersey with that drop shadow look that we created earlier. So I'm going to load the 11 by 15 back on, which I believe should be wide enough for this application. We'll see. I have a Sport Tech fan jersey from Sanmar. Just a poly mesh jersey I'm going to load onto the heat press. Change my pressure and preheat for the increased thickness of the platen. I'm ready to line up my design, so obviously you want to make sure that nothing's interfering in between the adhesive of the material. And so the background layer on this particular one is thermofilm. This is our number one material for athletic jerseys. So I'm going to press that down as a background. Remember, just giving it a couple seconds. Feel the carrier away, corner to corner, doing my best not to stretch out the shirt for alignment of my foreground layer. Then I'm going to take my Fashion Film Electric material. Position that into place. And you can see I'm getting that sort of top drop shadow effect that's almost giving you a 3D look. And I'm going to tack that down just for a couple seconds. 
because that carrier is crossing over my thermofilm and I don't want to leave a permanent indent. Carrier releases and then ultimately I'm going to finish it off for the full application of the fashion film electric which in this case is the uh, full 10 to 15 seconds. So all in all throughout the class um, you should have learned a little bit about uh, not only how to create knockout looks for free in cadworkslive.com but um, some great material combinations. We have anything from thermofilm and fashion film electric um, that create a standout combination to the ability to press the underbill of hats with fashion film electric and fashion film. Uh, fashion film is great for this process because of the fine detail. Um, we talked a bit about uh, the use of glitter flake which is always a uh, top seller and we applied that at the beginning of the class. 3M reflective on top of fashion film where you get that retro reflective result uh, when light hits it and then of course the super tech clear matte with the glitter on top to give you the laser etched effect. So all said and done, there is a lot of different applications that you can do with knockout designs. So we'd encourage you to try this look with your customers. Ultimately our goal here at Stalls TV is to help inspire you to sell more. So we're hopeful that you can take these tutorials and concepts shared today to ultimately grow your business. Please fill out the survey when the class concludes and visit StallsTV.com for the recording that will be posted tomorrow. Thanks for watching.